about um, privacy versus security is as old as civilization, you can say. But there is something new now. For the first time in history, it's possible to completely eliminate privacy. It was just never possible before, and it is possible now. Something fundamental has changed. Mm -hmm. When dictators always dreamt about completely eliminating privacy, monitoring everybody all the time, and knowing everything you do, and not just everything you do, but even everything you, you think and everything you feel. Whether it's a tyrant in ancient Greece, or whether it's Stalin, they always dreamt about it. They could never do it, because it was technically impossible. Now it's possible. We are at an inflection point, I believe, in the world economy. Not just the world economy, in the world. It occurs every three or four generations. As one of, my, as the, uh, one of the top military people said to me in a secure meeting the other day, 60, 60 million people died between 1900 and 1946. And uh, since then, we established a liberal world order, and that hadn't happened in a long while. A lot of people dying, but nowhere near the chaos. And now is the time when things are shifting. We're gonna have, there's going to be a new world order out there, and we've got to lead it, and we've got to unite the rest of the free world in doing it. All right, I want to start off by saying Brakatha Yahawu, Brakatha Yaharashai, Brakatha Yahawu, Brakatha Yaharashai, Call Hala Yahawu by Shim Yaharashai. Kohala Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh by Hashem Rakakodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles at Great Millstone that told me this doctrine in truth and sincerity. Shalom on to the elect. The Heavenly Father's name is Yahweh, which means He is or He exists by Hashem in the name of His only begotten Son, who the world ignorant calls Jesus Christ. We know His name to be Yahweh Shai, which means He is the deliverer, He is the Savior for the Hebrew Israelites from the pedigree of your Father by Hashem in the name. Of the Ruach HaKodash, which means the Holy Spirit that's able to give us this knowledge, wisdom, understanding of who we are, which are the true Hebrew Israelites. If you're so-called Negro, so-called Latino, so-called Native American, or of the speckled bird looking like the other nations, and your spirit bear witness with this doctrine, you could be one elect. Shalom. We've been discontinued from our heritage because we went off following after false gods and false idols, not following the law, set your commandments that was given to us by our forefathers. And because of those offenses, we were put under our oppressors, put at a lower state that you see today. But through the comforter, Yaharashai HaMashiach, we're able to have mercy and we're able to have understanding of who we are and come back to our heritage. Okay? And that's what this is all about, is coming back to your heritage and repenting for your sins and seeking Yahweh HaShem HaShai while he is nigh. Because your adversary, the devil... Is like a lion roaring, waiting to who he shall devour. And as you see right there, they're trying to bring in, um, they're speaking very proudly about their new world order, the Novus Order Secorium. And who is that? That's the wicked. Those are the biblical Edomites, Esau, Edom, Adumia, the, the true red man, the self-proclaimed white man, the elites, the banksters, they are the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the Oppenheimers, the DuPonts, the ones that are pulling the strings in this world that would have the fatness of the earth, the best places, and would control it with a great sword. Okay? Because again, it's been given to them. They've been given their portion by our Lord Yahweh for them to reign for a little season. And that's what you're seeing right now. And this dreadful sound on the right-hand side is, is uh, getting to them. OK, and them bringing in their new world order, or them even speaking about it, that's because uh, out of their desperation, that's, uh, you know, Esau, Edom crying out, weeping with tears. OK, because, again, he has a God complex. You know, our Lord, um, you know, has given him the nature of uh, deceit and um, he thinks that he can be able to accomplish this. But well, we know that the deceive and the deceiver are Yahweh by Shimei Rashai's. So I want to get a scripture. This is Ezekiel 28 and 2. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. So again, say unto the prince of uh, Esau, Edom. Thus said the Lord, Yahweh, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am God. I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art man and not God, though you set thy heart as the heart of God. So again, because he's been given his portion, 
right? Um, he thinks that he um, is God, right? So much so that his um, he wants to bring in a, a new world order through order out of chaos, which is in the Latin, through these uh, staged events and all leading up to the Karabma, which is a graven image in your forehead or in your hand, something that's physical inserted inside of you that will have you be a perpetual slave, okay? You will be a slave to Esau Edom, right? And if you, according to scriptures, if you, um, you know, take it, you will get a grievous sore and you will get caught up in the, 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 the missiles that are about to hit this place, Babylon. Babylon goes back to Babel, which goes back to confusion, okay? And America goes back to Amar, which goes back to bitter. And we're in a bitter, confused state when, Esau Edom is trying to, not trying to, but is pulling off a blockade and a siege, which is a military tactic to um, have you comply, have you bow down to the image of the beast. Because again, this is the whore that sits upon the beast, okay? Which is Babylon the Great is the whore and the beast is the NATO and the EU, okay? And this is Rome 2.0 again. And these, these are the Edomites, right, that would have rulership, the self-proclaimed white man, okay, and in his great pride, he thinks that he's going to be able to accomplish this diligent search, but we know it's all going to go to naught, but these prophecies have to happen, right, to bring in the kingdom of Yahweh, 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 all right, Ezekiel 28 and 3, behold, thou art wiser than Daniel, there is no secret thou can hide from thee, so again, because of, um, the power that Yahweh has given them, you know, to be able to have, um, you know, their science, you know, to be able to go up to, you know, to have their satellites, to be able to watch people, to be able to have facial recognition, you know, to be able to have these uh, airplanes, um, you know, and of course their weaponry, their, their heart has deceived them. Ezekiel 28 and 4. With thy wisdom and with thy understanding, thou hast gotten these riches and had gotten gold and silver into the treasure. So again, they have gotten many lands. Okay, they have over 800 bases in, in 80 countries where they're able to push forth their democracy, bringing forth tyranny. Okay, bringing forth, putting the, the man, um, the woman over the man. Okay, bringing out the children to be man on man, woman on woman, transformers. And anybody that doesn't comply to their um, their mandates, it's a get down or lay down mentality. And what they'll do is they'll put someone in office, uh, a puppet, like just like they have right now with Joe Butthead, that will uh, run the nation. And if um, you know if they say anything or buck up against the system again, they'll be knocked off. For instance, look at JFK. Okay, even though he was a part of the the system, but when he did say something, even him and his brother got knocked off. Okay. That's why it's a, you know, with the men of the Lord, we have that, uh, you know, the angels that camp around those that fear him. We actually have that hedge. And then you had the guy with the gray state when he was trying to bring out uh, what these uh, elites were doing. Okay. Guess what? His family and all of them got knocked off. Okay. Because again, they weren't men of the Lord that were actually pushing forth because the men of the Lord are going to have what um, that refuge, that shelter. Okay, they're going to be uh, comforted through Yahweh and the angels, right? Ezekiel 28 and 5. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic, thou hast increased thy riches and thine heart is lifted up because of their riches. So again, because of all their control and their dominance in all these countries, um, they're able to um, think that they can be able to accomplish the diligent search because again, they have everyone under that great sword. And the prophets of old have prophesied to see this time that we're in right now. Okay? And what we're in the latter times according to prophecy. According to measuring the times diligently. According to the scriptures. Right? Habakkuk 2 and 3. For the vision is yet for a appointed time, but the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. So again, the starting with the apostles and the elders... They have prophesied about, you know, the Kragma and the New World Order and, and the re-educational camps and all these different things, okay, about 10, 15 years ago, if not longer, okay? But now it's for, it's yet for a point in time. I want to get this word vision. 
because again, when you're when you're a prophet, you prophesy, and when, what is prophesy? That's forecasting the future, of uh, future events that are about to happen um, to a kingdom. Because again, the prophets are known as um, you know doomsday uh, keepers or you know doomsday people. Why? Because they're telling you that the end is near. Okay, and that's how the Lord speaks is through His prophets. Hebrews twenty three and seventy seven. Let's see. I want to go on the root word. Yeah, Hebrews 23 and 72. To see as a seer. To perceive with the intelligence. So again, the intelligence is from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Again, wisdom only dwells with the friends of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Right? As it speaks about in a roughly paraphrasing that, that's wisdom of Solomon 7. Okay, to provide. And they're providing what the, the Israelites, the so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos, so-called Native Americans, giving them that warning, Ezekiel 3 and 17, being that watchman that sits upon that watch. Yeah, to prophesy, and that is the spirit and the testimony of our Lord, Yahweh Shai. Okay, to prophesy. That's the, one of the most important lots that you can have in this ministry is to be a prophet. Okay, Hebrews 23 and 72. So again, the vision is yet for a point in time. And right now, it's what? It's not tarrying. Because they're speaking about the Kraga on uh, mainstream. Okay, they're speaking about their new world order, mainstream. Okay, so again, it will not tarry. Then you see them burning down these uh, um, food companies, these food uh, processing companies. Okay, you see them speaking more draconian. You see the pestilence, you see the famine. So all these things, let me actually get it. Are signs of the end times 28 that they were spoken about in Matthew, okay, and also 2nd Ezra 16. Jeremiah 28 and 8 the prophets that have been before thee, before me, and before thee, all prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and evil and a pestilence. So, again, when these people think that they're going to be able to accomplish their new world order, that's nothing new. And I'm going to bring out a couple accounts of that. You know, you have one in the Maccabees and you also have one um, during the, the time of Nimrod where they were trying to bring everyone together. OK, but we know that the Lord separated the nations for a reason, because, again, he has his chosen line and the rest are but a bucket of spittle. Habakkuk 2 and 4, behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his face. So again, when it's speaking about which is lifted up is not upright in him, that's speaking about Esau Edom. Because again, he is profane, he is outside the temple, and he has no place of repentance, according to Hebrews 12 and 16. Okay, and with that no place of repentance, he is a vagabond fugitive wandering to and fro, seeking who he may devour. Okay, and the, the just shall live by the faith, that's the elect. The left are living by faith in Yahweh Shemar Shai because without faith it is impossible to please him that he is a rewarder that diligently seek him. Roughly paraphrasing. Habakkuk 2 and 5. Yet also because he transgressed by wine. So again, his philosophy, thinking that he can bring in the new world order, you know, his um his so-called liberal stances when um he acts liberal about uh, certain things, he acts like he wants to help Jake. And then what does he do? He throws him under the bus at the same instance. He's speaking with a, a double tongue as it speaks about an apographer. Okay. Yeah. Also because he transgressed by one and also with his, uh, you know, the three unclean uh, frogs. Okay. With the, you have the Vatican, you know, with their Roman Catholicism. Okay. That goes nothing back to uh, deity worship. Okay. The, the Vaticus, which goes back to a uh, serpent diviner. Okay. And then you have what their monetary system, which was what, the banksters, which the elites run, the small hats, okay, then you have their military uh, system over there in uh, Washington, D.C., that they're able to put that pressure, that be that hammer across the earth, right? He is a proud man. Yeah, Esau Edom is a very proud man, and because of that pride, he's going to get destroyed. He is a proud man, neither keep it at home. Yeah, because again, he's a vagabond. Vagabond means a person, a wanderer. Okay, and that's what a fugitive does. They're always on the run, changing their identity, which is what they do. They still don't want to be called Esau, Esau Edom, which is biblically who they are, who enlarges his desire as hell. So hell is a condition. That's the condition that we live in right now. We're in the condition of hell. Why? Because we have our oppressor over us. We have our women over us. Okay, 
we have um, when we walk outside, we're in the valley of shadow of death. Okay, it starts with Babylon the Great, but it's it's pushed around the four corners of the earth wherever that Esau Edom pitches his tent. That's why it says prophesy against Mount Seir, which is against Esau. Okay, the self-proclaimed white man. It says in as death. Yeah, so Esau is known as death because everything he promotes is um, death. It is the left side. He is that vessel that was created to dishonor the the um the, the vessel that was created for wrath and destruction that's Esau and cannot be satisfied but he gathered unto him all nations and heap unto him all people so again that goes into his new world order because the guy was speaking about uh, many dictators have tried to accomplish um you know what they're what they think that they're going to be able to accomplish but we know that's all going to go to not okay And that's recording to many different scriptures, but we'll just bring out this one right here. We'll bring out two. Psalms 33 and 10. It says, The Lord, Yahweh bringeth the counsel of the heathen to not. He maketh the devices of people of none effect. So, they're, again, they're not able to um, accomplish their their schemes and their plots, which they, they're able to devise iniquity upon their beds, you know, in these uh, Bilderberg meetings, these uh, think tank meetings, these United Nations General Assembly meetings, they're not able to um, accomplish what they what they please. Another scripture, Job 5 and 12, he disappointed the vices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise and their enterprise is their new world order. Okay. And they're speaking, they're letting their own tongue fall upon themselves. Let me get that. Because they're speaking about it. And before they would be what? In secrecy. Okay, but but through the servants of Yahweh Shem Rashai, through Yahweh Shem Rashai, through the real Kakadash, they're being exposed. They're being that consuming fire. Psalm 64 and 8. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. So again, People are trying to flee away, but again, if you don't have that comforter, you're not going to be able to flee away. There's no, there's no, uh, <laughs> there's no escape in this, you know, about what's about to happen. Okay, unless you have that hedge, you have that refuge. Why are they doing this? Because they know that they have but a short time. They're seeing the men of the Lord waking around the four corners of the earth, speaking different tongues. Okay, and they tried to, you know, infiltrate spies. Um, far as you know, with the five hundred one c three. You know, having people um, false doctrine, saying that you can be adulterer, saying you can carry sticks to camp, you know, calling on uh, Christ, okay, calling on Jesus, um, you know, saying that Yahweh Shai didn't do no miracles, John the Baptist is not in the truth. That's how you're able to know that there's a sifting in the tabernacle of David. There's being a sifting out, you know, between the um, the wicked and the, and, the, and the righteous, you know, the house of Saul, which is the wicked, and the house of uh, David, which is the righteous. Under your Havashai. Revelation 12 and 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and that dwell therein, and them, Slakia, woe, which means destruction to the habitants of the earth and of the sea. So again, the habitants of, of the um the sea is the people, right? For the devil has come down to you. So again, the devil in the flesh is Esau Edom. Okay? Because again, he has that power, and, and de a devil means to be adverse. He's adverse to anything that has to do with life which is the right-hand side of Yahweh Shai. Devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knoweth that he had but a short time, okay? So again, that he knows that he has but a short time. So that's why he's going to come out with his, um, you know, speaking like a dragon with those two horns, which is the Roman uh, Empire all over again, okay? Um, he's going to come out with his, um, you know, his weaponry, his, his carnality, which is his, um, you know, his uh, re-educational camps, you have the uh, martial law, okay? You have his, um, again, his legislation's unrighteous decrees where he's able to, um, you know, justify his uh, his wickedness, okay? So I want to get um, two accounts just to show you there's not, this is not, this is not new, okay? These devils, they think it's new and, let me, actually two scriptures, Proverbs 16 and 18, because this is what pride does, okay? And pride is enmity to the Lord, right? Proverbs 16 and 18, pride go up before destruction, okay? And a haughty spirit before a fall, 
And that's what these devils are. They're very proud. They are a proud man. They enlarge their place as hell. Okay, they're very prou proudful. Why? Because they've been able to accomplish a lot in a very short time. Okay, but we know that this is just temporal and the kingdom is eternal. Okay. Ecclesiastics 1 and 9. It says, history merely repeats itself. It has all been done before. Nothing under the sun is truly new. And I'm reading this in the NLT. 10. Sometimes people say here is something new, but actually it is old. Nothing is ever truly new. So again, these devils trying to bring in their new world order, and they've been trying to do this for a long time. Okay? Um, but it's not, it's not nothing new. They tried to do this, you know, starting with uh, Nimrod. And we'll go back to that account. Genesis 10 and 6. And I'm going to skip around. This is Genesis 10. <clears throat> yeah, just get to the, Genesis 10 and 8. And Cush beget Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one on the earth. Okay, so um, Nimrod was from the, from the Cushites, okay? And he was a mighty warder, si similar to how Esau Edom is a mighty hunter. He's a cunning, crafty hunter, okay? Nine, he was a mighty hunter before the Lord Yahweh, wherefore he said, even as I am Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord Yahweh. So again, when you go into that word Nimrod, it goes back to uh, rebellion. That's what his name me means, is rebellion, and that's exactly... Um, you know, what the, the people are doing over here in Babylon the Great. They are rebelling against um, the Heavenly Father, okay? Because, again, the heathen nations haven't been given the law, statute, commandments, and two-thirds of our people have surpassed the wicked. Ten, in the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, and Erech, and Akkad, and Kana, and the land of Shinar. So, again, when you go in, this is Babylon uh, 2.0. Why? Because, again, all the wickedness. So we're going to get the actual definition for that of a Babel. And so this is the Hebrews 894. It goes, yeah, so Babel or Babylon, confusion by mixing. Okay, yeah, mixing of what? The, the races, you know, that's why I said not go, go not the way of the heathens, or the way of the Canaanites. Why? Because, again, of, of all their wicked customs. Okay. Now, there's nothing wrong with being, you know, if you're a guy with <laughs> with another, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're an Israelite, you know, with a, with your concubine or, or with another nation of a woman. But the thing is, is that when you do that, um, you know, far as with the, when the women do that, they're not able to carry the seed. Because, again, Numbers 1 and 18, the pedigree of your father is the one that carries the seed. Okay. So, again, I just want to bring that out. Yeah, Babu, which goes back to confusion by mixing. See if it says anything else about that. Yeah, to uh, this is Hebrews eleven zero one to mix, to mingle, to confuse, to confound. Yeah, and to mix oneself with what the heathen customs, following the heathen customs. Okay, because again, we were given our our true God. Okay, we were given our our one true God, which is Yahweh. We weren't get these other heathen nations. They were given many gods. And this is, I want to get, this is the point. This is in the Hebrews, or it's like Genesis 11 and 4. Showing you that there's nothing new under the sun. Let me just highlight it real quick. Genesis 11 and 4. And they said, go let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach into heaven. Let us make a, a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. So again, they wanted to make, they wanted to uh, build this tower. Okay, what? To reach up into the heavens. Okay, so they wouldn't be able to have what? Protection. Okay, and that's the same thing that they have now. Over there, and I think it's Virginia, they have um, a Babel. Okay, they're building it up. I think that's Amazon. And when you go into that word Amazon, it goes into um, like a, a, a fierce woman. You know, which is the same vibration of the of this uh, Babylon the Great. Okay, they're they're yeah, a fierce woman. You know, the unbelievers, 
um, you know, wicked metropolitan areas goes back to feminism. Okay. And they always want the woman above you again, but that's not the order. Okay. Genesis 11 and five. And the Lord Yahweh came down to see the city and the tower, which the children of men builded six. And the Lord Yahweh said, behold, the people is one and they have all one language and they that begin to do. And now nothing be restrained from them, which they have imagined seven go to let us go down there and confound their language and they may not understand one another's speech so again the angels went down to confound uh um, their speeches okay because again they were trying to build a new world order they were trying to build a one world government when the lord has separated um you know his chosen ones from his not chosen ones and even out of the the chosen which is the the israelites there's a there's a elect okay Hey, so the Lord Yahweh scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of the earth, and they that left all that build the city. Nine, there is a name of it called Babel, which Babel, which means confusion. It says, therefore, the name is called Babel because of the Lord Yahweh did there confound the language of all the earth from whence did the Lord Yahweh scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So, again, um, Babylon the Great is is America of today. OK, because, again, of all their all their um, wicked rulerships goes back to then. And also all these uh, different captivities. Because, again, there's only one nation that he actually sub with. The rest are what but a bucket of spittle. Right? And why? Because we were given the law, statute, commandments that our forefather. Okay? And they were worshiping all, tor all sorts of other gods. Let's get that. Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Gen uh, yeah. Deuteronomy 6 and 4. So, again... The Rami goes back to the second law. And again, we had to re-emphasize, um, you know, what we were supposed to do right. So Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Here, Israel, O Lord, Yahweh, our power is one power. Yes, yeah, so again, he is one power. 5. And thou shalt love the Lord, Yahweh, thy God, with thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these, these words which I command thee this day, I shall be on thy heart. Okay, so again, that's what we were supposed to do, keep the commandments. But because, you know, referring to um, Deuteronomy 28, we were supposed to follow the law, such commandments that was given to us. Okay, we weren't supposed to go after these uh, other gods. Let's get that. Because these other gods are nothing but idols. And that goes into, and the reason why I'm bringing this out, because that goes into, um, you know, people trusting in Esau, Edom, and trusting in this beast system. Okay, so it says, Psalms 96 and 5, For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the but the Lord Yahweh made the heavens. Actually, let me get, yeah, 4, Slakia. Yeah. Psalms 96 and 4, the, For the Lord Yahweh is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord Yahweh made all heavens. So again, they were trying to worship uh, Nimrod and all these other uh, different uh, deities, these gods that they had at the time of Babylonian the Great. And again, all of them are back again. That's why it speaks about what nation is so nigh that has all the commandments. Because again, that's the chosen line. Just like you have a you know a favorite color or maybe a favorite car, whatever it is, um, the Lord has a, f a chosen uh, people. Yeah, so... Deuteronomy 4 and 6, keep therefore and do them, for this is the wisdom and understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all thy statutes and say, surely the great nation is a wise and understanding people. 7, for what nation is there so great who had Yahweh so nigh unto them as the Lord Yahweh our power is in all things that we call upon him for? 8, and what nation is there so great that had statutes and judgments so righteous as all the law which I set before you this day. So again, that's Israel. Okay? 
Those are the 12 tribes of Israel. Abraham, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob's name was later turned to Israel, and that's the son of the promise, the 12, the 12 tribes. Okay? And just to back that up, because again, these devils are trying to bring in their new world order, but actually they're bringing in the kingdom of Yahweh Shai. And the elect are going to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. Psalms 147 and 19. He showeth his word. So who is his word? Yahweh Shai, which is salvation unto Jacob. Jacob is also Israel, interchangeable. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. So again, draw me four and six. Okay. And we brought it out. Um, I think that was what? Six and four. Okay. Psalms 147 and 20. This is the point. He had not dealt so with any other nation as for the judgments. They have not known them. Praise ye the Lord, Yahweh. So again, they have not known um, our Lord because they had, they weren't given the law, such commandments. That's why you see them eating a bat. You know, that's why you'll see them, um, you know, eating gator and all these things. Those are um, profane and outside the temple. Isaiah 40 and 15, behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and they are counted as the small dust of a balance. Behold, take up of the aisles is a very little thing. So again, you have a two gallon water. Um, you have a gallon, so you have a gallon of water. Now you, you take a sip, you drop a little bit on the ground. You're not going to be the next day. You're not going to be, oh well, man, where's that drop of water? No, you're not going to worry about that. And that's how Yahweh Shemar Shai thinks of these other heathen nations. 17 it says isaiah 40 and 17 all nations before him are as nothing and they are counted to him less than nothing they are all vanity so again they are let me read this in the nlt it says the nations of the world are worth nothing to him in his eyes they count for less than nothing more emptiness and force so again, they were a bucket of spittle okay and also said it all reiterates that in um second ezra in the apocrypha second ezra is six and uh 54 Okay, speaking about the chosen line of Adam, and, and we are the chosen line of Adam. Okay. All right, so, and then also I want to get another account of when these nations try to do the same thing again. And this is back in the, um, during Antiochus' epiphany, during the, the Maccabees. It's just showing you that there's nothing new under the sun. And these those those times before they weren't able to accomplish their um, you know what they had uh, forth, and they're not going to be able to accomplish it again, according to prophecy. Okay. Let me just highlight this real quick. Let's go down. Because again, this is where you go into these uh, heathen customs. We started to be, um, you know, be like these heathens. Okay. All right. So let me start from eleven. I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip around a little bit, but I'm gonna get to the point. Because, again, our people were in what? They were in a Hellenized state, okay? They were um, calling themselves, you know, Greek. So, again, when you go into the word, let me get the definition real quick. Yeah, so um, a, a Helen, which is a lot of people who are being a Helen, they don't accept um, that they, they are Israelites, okay? For instance, you have, you know, people that maybe they live in uh, Mexico, okay? They lived in Mexico, but now they live in America, okay? And they'll call them Northern, they'll call them um, or Northern or Southerners, okay? But when they go back to their country, they don't accept as far as their, their culture there. They'll say they're American and things like that. Then you had the Hellenists. Those were the ones that actually knew that they were the Jews. They knew that they were the Israelites at that time, okay? And this is where it all started as far as them, uh, you know, being joined Unto these uh, heathen customs. Okay. I just want to try to grab a. Yeah. So Hellenist. Is. This is in the. What is this one? The new compact Bible dictionary. Okay. By Zondervan. It says Hellenist. Uh, Jews who made Greek their tongue. And with it. Often adopted Greek ideas and practices. Okay. And it's about in Acts 6 and 1. And Acts 9 and 29. 
So again, that's similar to uh, you know how how um, people are over here. You either speak what English, uh, French, or Spanish, okay? And those are all the um, those are all your oppressors. So First Maccabees one and eleven. And those days went out out of Israel wicked men who persuaded many, saying, "Let us go and make a covenant with the heathen. They are round about us. For since we departed from them, we have made such sorrow." So again, these are these wicked men are back today. They have made a covenant with the with the with the devil. Okay, with Esau Edom. And it says, make no covenants with the heathen. Okay? Don't don't follow the ways of the heathen. Right? And you got these men today, you know, these different camps that have made these 501c3 contracts and they can't tell the truth. So skipping down, first Maccabees 1 and 41. It says, Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people. So again, this is them bringing forth their new world order, okay? They should all be one people. Doesn't it sound like, um, you know, uh, Nimrod, which goes back to rebellion and Babel, which goes back to confusion. And that goes back to the same things that you see today, that there's nothing new that's under the sun, okay? It says, moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people 42 and everyone should leave his laws so that all the heathen agreed to the to the commandment of the king so again they shall leave what their law statute the law statute commandments that was given to them okay 43 and yeah many also of the israelites consented to the religion and sacrifice unto idols and profane their sabbath so again they didn't they were following after these heathen customs they were you know in the gymnasiums you know uh, working out butt naked okay um, you know, which is similar to what you see today. You know, you have um, people with the dreadlocks, you know, the, the, the lineups, you know, eating pig, you know, um, you know, celebrating these pagan holidays. OK. And that's the same thing that was happening back then. First Maccabees 1 and 44, the king had sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judah that should follow the strange laws of the land. Yeah. So, again, these are unrighteous decrees. Isaiah 10 and 1, which is the same thing. They're going to start to do um, what well, they have done. You know, you have, um, you know, the Emancipation Proclamation, which was basically they took the yoke off your off your neck and then they put you as a, um, a corporate slave, which they they're able to tax you at work. They're able to tax your woman. OK, if you, um, you know, you get married through their court system, they can um, get alimony. They have uh, child support. OK. And many other different things that they do. Okay, it says 40, 45 and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifice and drink offerings into the temple. And that should profane the Sabbath and festival days. So, again, yeah, you're not able to have according to the new moon, according according to the moon. OK, you're not able to have your uh, Sabbath day. OK, they're not going to say, well, you know, you, you can just take off that day. No, they don't do that. OK, they don't do that here, showing you that they don't they have the form of being godly. But they are ungodly. Okay. 46. And pollute the sanctuary in the holy people. Yeah. So again, when you're not following your law, set your commandments that was given to us by our forefathers. Okay. You're polluting the holy people. Who are the holy people? The ones that are separate, which are the Hebrew Israelites. 47. Set up the altars and the groves and the chapels and the idols. Sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts. So again, that's what they were doing upon the altars, which swine is a... Uh, um, abomination to the lord it's in the deity law that you're not supposed to eat swine okay even touch it right 48 because again why why because this the swine uh a pig is meant to clean up the earth okay it's meant it's meant to you know eat things on the earth to be able to make it clean just like catfish just like lobster just like shrimp and if you eat it it becomes um you get gout you get disease okay so again our Lord is not grievous in, in the law, statute, commandments. 48, that they should also leave the children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all manner of uncleanness and profaneness, profane nation. So again, when you're, um, you know, again, going back to the, the um, circumcision, okay, there's a reason why. Because then again, in the womb, you know, you need it to, to be like that, to be able to cover so it doesn't get um, infected. OK, but when it when it's out, you're able to, um, you know, when it's circumcised, you don't you don't need that. OK, just like the. Um, the feeding cord, 
Okay, the um, I can't even think of it right now. But you, uh, the umbilical cord, kun tawadi haba shemar shai. Yeah, the umbilical cord. You know, you need it because it's a feeding tube down to your, um, you know, down to down to the baby's uh, stomach. But when it, when it's out, you cut it off. Okay, and that's all done uh, for a reason. Okay, forty nine to the end. They might forget the law and change all the ordinances. So again, that's what they're trying to do right now. They're trying to um, uh, abolish the Bible. Okay, they already said they don't, you know, don't have any prayers when they had that that thing that came out a couple years ago. They said not to pray. Okay, things like that. And these other countries, you know, like uh, Russia, um, like China. Okay, they are abolishing the the Bible. Okay, there's certain apps that you can't even go on that has to be referencing the Bible because they want you to reference their um their leader okay their their totarian leader totarianism okay which is where they're able to have full uh, rulership dictatorship that's why they have these re-educational camps to be able to have you under this rule real quick this word fascist and also fascism fascism is a way of organizing a society which a government ruled by a dictator controls the lives of the people in which people are not allowed to disagree with the government so again that's what they're creating over here he already said where you can be able to why would you want to watch someone all day long okay you don't have nothing and that just shows you esau edom is a pervert okay why would you want to watch another man in his family all day long okay and that's what esau edom wants to do this is um totalitarian totalitarian okay relating uh, to a system a government that is centralized and dictatorly and requires a complete subversance to the state so again everybody has it's about it's a get down or lay down mentality okay uh it says authoritarian this is a similar word it says favoring or enforcing strict obedience to authority especially that of the government at the expense of personal freedom. So again, that's what they're doing right now. They're taking away certain of your rights. What do you think all these uh, psyops, these shootings are about? They had one over there in Washington, D.C. Okay, that's to be able to take away your your, your uh, right to bear arms. Now, we're not supposed to be carnal, but there's not, you know, as long as it's registered, it's okay. Okay, but the thing is, is that they're doing this for a reason to take away your rights. So it's easier for them when they come in like that flood to be able to just put people in these uh, camps, okay? It says, um, and whoever, 50, and whoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he shall die. So again, that's the same thing they're going to say when um, they come down to these, uh, if you don't take the karagma, then it's a get down or lay down mentality, okay? That's why they have the guillotines, okay? That's why they have the shackles, Okay, that's why they have their they brought back the, the right to legally execute you. First Maccabees 51. In the self the same manner wrote, He is to the whole kingdom and appointed overseas over all the people, commanding the cities of Judah to sacrifice city by city. So again, this was a decree that you had to do it. Okay, otherwise you would die. First Maccabees 1 and 52. And this is the point that we're getting into right now. First Maccabees 1 and 52. Then many of the people were gathered unto them that with everyone that forsook the law and so that they committed evils in the land and they drove the Israelites into secret places, even whatsoever they could flee for Sakar. So again, going into, you couldn't practice your customs. You had to do what? Do it in secret. Okay. So I want to get, this is also another point that I want to bring out because this is what they're going to try to do. They're going to try to demonize the men of the Lord. First Maccabees 1 and 56, and when they had rent, rent in pieces of the books of the law, which they have found, they burnt them with fire. And whoever was found with any book of the testament, or if any committed to the law of the kings of commandments, was that should put him to death. So again, that's the same thing that they're going to try to do in this time. Okay, they're going to try to um, demonize uh, the Lord. They're going to try to demonize the word. Okay, but they that despise the word um, despise him that sent him. Okay, and they shall what Proverbs thirteen and thirteen they shall be destroyed. Okay, and the point of that was to bring out that there's nothing new that's under the sun. These devils are trying to bring in their new world order again. Okay, and it speaks about you know um, far as woe unto you that trust in man. Okay, 
woe unto you that go down to Egypt for help. I think that's actually, oh, I'll bring out this other scripture. So this is uh, Jeremiah 17 and 5. Jeremiah 17 and 5, thus said the Lord, Yahweh, cursed be the man that trusts in man who make flesh his arm and whose the heart depart from the Lord, Yahweh. So again, let me, let me get this. This is in the NLT. Jeremiah 17 and 5, this is what Yahweh, Yahweh Shai says, cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from Yahweh, Hashem, Shai. You know, yep. So, and you're going to have a lot of people doing that because they want to go to work. You know, they, they love this life. They love the, the world that they live in. Okay. They don't want to see the kingdom of Yahweh by Shemar Let me get another one on trusting in uh, Esau or trusting in man. Psalms 118 and 8, it is better to trust in Yahweh than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in Yahweh than to put confidence in these princes. So again, that's what these uh, devils are going to start to do. Okay, they're going to start to um, put that pressure. These princes are going to start to put the pressure on their people, right? As you're seeing in these other countries. Psalms 118 and 10, all nations can pass me about, but the Lord... But in the name of Yahweh, I will destroy them. So again, our Lord is going to be able to destroy these devils. Okay. And what they're actually pushing forth. And what they're pushing forth is what? Them to be in all your business. Okay. To have no what? Freedoms. But again, we know that we're in captivity. I want to get this one more scripture because the guy was speaking about, um, he wants to be able to watch everyone. So this is... Um, Yeah, let me just get uh, Psalms 10 and 5. His ways are always grievous. Their judgments are far above out of his sight. As for his enemies, he puffeth at them. So again, he puffeth. His number one enemy is the Israelites, the men of the elect. Okay, so he puffeth at them because he thinks he's in a power seat. He's able to do what he wants. But again, his pride has deceived him. Psalms 10 and 6. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved for I shall never be in adversity. Yeah, he'll never be in trouble. Okay, he thinks that, right? So, but we know that the um, the king stirreth up the stir the uh, Yahweh Hashem Hashai stirs up the king like the waters, and he do he's gonna do his pleasure, right? Roughly paraphrasing that Psalms ten and seven, his mouth is full of cursing and deceit, and fraud under his tongue, mischief and vanity. Yeah, so that's what he's constantly doing. He's plotting on the people, and that's why it says, "Woe unto you that trust in men." Eight, he sitteth in the lurking, this is the point right here. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages and the secret places doeth he murder the innocent. His eyes are privily set against the poor. And who are the poor? Um, the Israelites. Why? Because they're set at a low estate. Okay. And he sits in the lurking places. So he sits in these, um, you know, he'll sit in these offices. And meanwhile, he's got cameras all in the ghettos and the vadios. Okay. Watching. Watching, you know, people killing each other, watching people selling drugs, watching the dope fiends in the, in the, in the, you know, walking up and down the street, watching prostitution. Because again, this is what Esau likes to do. He likes to watch our people. He likes to what? Um, he says he sitteth in the lurking places. I want to get this. That word for lurking. And he sits again with his cameras watching who you can do. If you got brothers watch uh, a, a show called person of interest, they're able to know what a person is doing wrong or not. And they're able to identify them through facial recognition. Yeah. So uh, lurking, this is in the Hebrews 39, 93 ambush blind lurking places. Yeah. And what do they do? They ambush our people. Okay. Even though they're doing, they might be selling drugs or something like that, but they ambush our people and put them in pr prison cells and they make money off that. They um, set up, they put guns in the community um, that's able to kill our people and they watch it, okay? Because they could be able to stop it, but they're the ones that are pushing forth. They were the wicked. Psalms 10 and 9, he lieth wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth in wait to catch the poor. He doeth catch the poor when he draw them into his net. Yeah, so he draws people into his net with what? His hip hop, the hip hop industry, 
you know, his drugs, okay? Because, again, Jake's at a low estate, so he draws him into what his net, okay? Like a lion. And, again, this is a 10. He crouches and humble himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. Yep. He said in his heart, God had forgotten. He had hide his face. He will never see it. So, again, uh, that's what the devil thinks. He thinks that he's not going to be found. But, again, the Lord, according to 2 Thessalonians um, 2 and 7, okay, he the, he's being consumed by the by the fire of the prophets. Okay. the um, This word is a consuming fire. Let me just get it real quick. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 7. Two and eight, Second Thessalonians two and eight, and then shall the wicked be revealed. Who's the wicked? Esau, Edom, whom the Lord Yahweh Shai shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. So again, the spirit of his mouth are the prophets, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So again, he, this word is going to destroy him, and we know that our Lord Yahweh Shai is going to be coming with that great sword. Okay, he's not coming as that meek and lowly uh, in the flesh. He's coming as an angelic force with the archangel Michael, a time of trouble like never before. So again, I got one more scripture. Ezekiel 35, start from 11. Ezekiel 35 and 11. Therefore, as I live, said the Lord, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, I will even do according to thine anger, according to thy envy, which thou hast used out of your hatred against them. I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. Okay. So again, the Lord is coming back through what? The, the the apostles and the elders on down, making himself known. Because again, he, he uh, Hosea 5 and 15, he turned his back uh, away from us and said he would seek us while we are nigh, while we are low. And now is the time and the season when the men of the Lord are being raised up. The tabernacle of David, Ezekiel 35 and 12. And thou shalt know that I am thy power, Yahweh. That I heard all the blasphemies which thou hast spoken against the mountains, yes, so against the governments of Israel, saying, They are laid desolate and they are given us to consume. So again, they're given to us to what? To be able to devour, to be maids and handmaids. Okay? Which they did. And and I'll cease about that in Zechariah, um, I think that's Zechariah one and fifteen, where it speaks about they kept uh, fording the affliction. Yeah, it says, Zechariah 1 and 15, I am very, it says, and I am very sore displeased with the heathen that they are at ease, for I was but a little displeased, and they helped for the affliction. So these devils did not let up. Let me just get it right here. And let me get one more scripture. This is Hosea, because our Lord did uh, turn his back on us, okay? But we know that our Lord, Yahweh Shai, was always with us, you know, in spirit. Hosea 5 and 15, that, that hand, Hosea 5 and 15, I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face in their affliction. They will seek me early. So again, through the spirit of the Ruach HaKadosh, the men of the Lord are seeking him early, seeking him while he may be found, according to Isaiah 55 and 6. But these devils have what help afforded the flip. Zechariah 1 and 15. I am very sore displeased with the heathen. They are at ease, for I was but a little displeased, and they helped forward the affliction. And that's what Esau Edom did. They helped forward the affliction. They put they kept going. Okay. Ezekiel 35 and 14. Thus said Yahabah Shemashai, when thy whole earth rejoice, I make thee desolate. 15. Wait. Yeah, let me, yeah, 13, Slakia. Thus with his mouth, you have boasted against me, and you have multiplied your words against me. I have heard them. So uh, I want to read this in the NLT. It says, in saying that you boasted proudly against me, I have heard it all. So again, they have proudly boasted. <laughs> he has heard it all. Again, he has heard about this new world order that they're trying to accomplish. Okay, 14. Thus, and that they are God, and they sit in the seat of God. It says, this is what the, the sovereign Lord, Yahabah Shemashai, says. It says, the whole world will rejoice when you make you desolate. So again, the whole world is going to rejoice. It says in Isaiah 14 that even the trees are going to rejoice. 15, 
uh, ended right here. It says, you rejoice at the desolation of Israel's territory. Now I will rejoice at yours and I will be wiped out. Your people of Mount Seir, Esau, Edom, and all you live in Edom, then you will know that I am Yahweh Shemar Hashai. Yeah, so these devils are going to know, okay, who Yahweh Shemar Hashai is, okay, according to prophecy, because again, he will glorify his name again, just like he did in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh. And in Romans 9, it's speaking about, it compares Pharaoh to um, Esau, Edom, too. So I want to get this uh, last point just to end it off. This is Sirach 10. And eight, because this is what's going to happen. Sirach ten and eight, because of unrighteous dealings and injuries and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. So again, Yahabah Shemar Shai, he appoints who's going to be up, who's going to be next in rulership, and who's next, Yahabah Shai, not China, not uh, Russia. Okay, it's Yahabah Shai and the elect. Okay, the Tabernacle of David. Sirach 10 and 9. Why is earth and ashes proud? Yeah, so why is Esau proud? There is a, none more wicked than a covetous man. Yeah, so a man that wants what another man has, his riches. For such as one set his own soul to sail, because while he liveth, he cast away his bowels. This is the point right here. 10. The physician, right, which is Yaharashai, cut off a long disease. And he, today is a king, tomorrow shall die. So again, they will be with the uh, the beast and the worms. Okay, they will be no more. And again, the elite, they're going to be put in captivity. Okay? And they're not going to have a, a, a resurrection again. They're not going to be able to come back after this. They're going to be in thousand years captivity. Okay? And they're going to be, um, and then put to stubble. And they won't be coming back no more. That's according to prophecy. So with that, call Allah Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim, Shalom to Alek Kwam Yashallah.